Hey everybody, thanks for watching. We are gonna continue our series on how to incorporate these family rhythms into your family's everyday life. So before we get started, I just want to give you a little bit of encouragement. You know that we are saved by grace through faith. We cannot earn our salvation, it is a gift from God. And I just wanna remind you that we also parent by grace through faith. And we don't have faith in our own attempts, in our own efforts, we have faith in a God that loves our kids so much better than we do. And it's not our own efforts. It's Amen. not incorporating these rhythms into your family's daily life that's gonna draw your kids into a relationship with God. It is God who does that work in their life and who draws them into a relationship with Him. So I just want you to keep that in mind that all we are doing is we are joining God in the work He's doing in our kids' lives. But He is already at work and we are just stepping into that journey with him. So be encouraged by that. We parent by grace through faith, and it is not by your own efforts. It is not by your own work that your kids will choose to follow Jesus. That is the work of God. Amen. I love hearing that. <laughs> Take some pressure yes, off. Definitely. It's a great reminder. <laughs> well, we are talking about mealtime today, and I'm excited about it because this is a struggle point for me. <laughs> I know you've always yeah. had a good experience at mealtime. Yes, I love mealtime. Mealtime is my favorite daily rhythm, and it's just funny, like when you talk to other people, this is not Lissa's favorite rhythm at all, but this is my favorite rhythm. And I grew up with mealtime as a priority in my home. My mom really fought for us to sit around the table for dinner together every night possible. And we actually, um, Saturday night dinners were a special family dinner and we would get steak and homemade french fries mm. every single yeah. week and I loved it. And even the older I got, um, especially in high school, I would tell my friends like, I'll come hang out, but I'll meet you after dinner with my family because I didn't want to miss that time. And we just really looked forward to that time together. So I grew up with it as something that was super important and it just kind of carried into my own family. So I love meal time. I love that tradition. I also love the extra incentive to stay home on a Saturday night. Yes. I think that's genius. It develops so my love of French fries. Amen. Which you should <laughs> As a kid growing up in America, I love that. Well, what about as an adult? Can I say that? Right. <laughs> well, I read the notes for this and I thought, okay, our role at mealtime is the teacher, which like I had a silent panic happening because it also says communication st style is a formal discussion and that our goal is to establish values. And immediately I just went pressure, pressure, pressure because yeah. thinking about that plus actually getting all the people at the table and then the food on the table, you know, it just feels like a crazy relay race sometimes where I'm like, you know, here's your fork, here's your water. Wait, you need a napkin? Okay. And by the time I get seated, you know, half, half the family's already finished eating right. and somebody needs ketchup. It's just crazy time. Mm -hmm. So I'm really truthfully excited to see just some of the tools and practical ideas you have for this time because I do want it to be special and I do want it to be intentional. Yes. Well, this family meal time is so important and then it's just a time for you to slow down as a family, to connect at the end of the day, or it could be at the beginning of the day. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. It doesn't have to be dinner time. But you know, for my family, when we're having a hard week and I can just sense that something is off, almost every time I can look at our schedule that we can say we've been so busy that we have not sat down to eat together. Mm -hmm. And that will throw our family off. And so I think that's another reason I really love meal time. But yes, this video is not gonna really be full of a lot of tips on how to get your table ready <laughs> and how to meet all the needs, how to anticipate oh, all the needs of your family. We're not gonna talk about that today. So um, we are gonna give you some tips on how to simplify that, you know, take some of the pressure off of actually the meal that you're putting on the table. Um, because it doesn't have to be a home-cooked meal. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to use real plates and silverware. You can go get something to eat and bring it home. And we're gonna talk more about that. But, so this video is not gonna cover all of that. You might need to watch like the Food Network or <laughs> something else, woman. read a blog about how to prepare, you know, your family for mealtime. Whatever is gonna work for you, you have to kind of figure that out. <laughs> but we're gonna give you some intentional things that you can include. So, are you ready for some practical tips? So ready. Okay. Okay, so the first couple practical tips are actually something we've been able to do so far. <laughs> so that's reassuring. The first one is, like Joy said, this doesn't have to be dinner every night. It doesn't have to be a huge production. 
Right. She's saying start with one meal or one snack time or one, you know, morning, Saturday morning breakfast, um, Thursday night ice cream, something simple. I right. think for me, an after school snack once once a week would be an easy, you know, let's go get a Coke or something like that. Trap them all in the car. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but then you're bringing in drive time. Oh, you true. Love drive time. <laughs> I do love drive time. So maybe that's my ulterior motive. Yeah, there you go. But it is relieving to think, okay, I can do once a week and then build from mm -hmm. that. So um, that's a great place to start expectations wise yeah. and um, planning wise. Yeah. Um, and I'll just add to that. If you're serious about choosing one meal a week that you really want to be intentional and bring people together, like Lissa said, you choose Saturday breakfast, maybe Sunday lunch but you've got to protect that time. Mm. So that means when your kids are saying, hey, can I um, sleep over at somebody's house? Yeah. Or can I go to this friend's house after church on Sunday? You say, you know, you say, you can spend time with that friend, but we are gonna share this meal together first because you've said that this is a priority, it's a value for your home to come together and to share that one meal a week. So protect it with your schedule. Yeah, that's wise. Um, okay, so the second thing mm. is to make this time a technology free zone yes. for adults so and kids. Mm -hmm. um, I know I can't tell you how many times my kids will be trying to drag their switch or iPad or something yeah. to the table and I have to ask them to remove it. But at the same time, that means that we also need to get rid of our phones yeah. um, so that we can actually look at each other. And that's not mm -hmm. been too hard as long as it's a consistent rule that we've established in our house. So right, yeah. find somewhere else for your phone. I think that's probably a harder rule for, for adults, adults than yeah. it is the kids right now for sure. So, okay, here are some practical resources that you can use during mealtime at home. Now, I'm gonna give you a lot of ideas. Now, I do not want you to have this like false idea of my family because I'm gonna share a lot of ideas with you today and I don't do them all every day. I mean, our dinners are not marathons. I can promise you that. These are all things that we have used at one time or another that have been effective for us. And so I, I hope that you will just look at these resources, find one that you want to try. Maybe your family will love it and you'll stick with it for a little while. Or maybe you'll change it up and every time you sit down together, your kids don't know what to expect because you're gonna bring something different to the table. So take these in, just listen, <laughs> go look at them and find something that works best for your family, okay? So here is one of the things that I use at my house. This is our table caddy oh, or whatever so you wanna call it. So this sits on our table. I don't have a fancy table. This sits there all the time. I keep my napkins in it. Um, and then typically whatever we're using at the time during mealtime, I'll put kind of over here in one of these little compartments. So I'm gonna pull some stuff out of here to show you um, just some different ideas. So one of the things that you can use are conversation starters. Now I actually ordered these from Amazon for my kids for Christmas um, and I'll link to those in the video notes that we put on our website, but these are just table topics. There are times when Chick-fil-A puts these in their kids' meals. Yeah, I've And seen so those. you can use these, you can find, and these are just random conversation starters. There's nothing spiritual about any of these things. But when you have these conversation starters, it might actually bring up like a story that mm -hmm. you remember from your childhood, or when I was a kid, I used to wanna be whatever. And so it's so important for our kids to connect to our story. And so the more you can share stories at the table, the better. And these just help steer your conversations and they might inspire a story. So one idea are just table topics, conversation starters. So these are a great place to start, especially if mealtime is new to you and you are just beginning this rhythm. Um, those table topics are awesome. So here is another thing I wanna show you. These are another um, thing. They're conversation starters, table topics. It's from something called Theology. And these are questions about God. This is a PDF that you can find on their website. Now, Theology is a set of children's books that are gonna be released this year. It's been written by Jenny Allen. Oh, and yeah. it, the mission of it is to give your kids a big view of God. That's cool. So if you wanna just start asking fun questions, but about God to lead in that direction, these questions will be great. And I'll link this for you on our website as well. But just some of the examples are, do you think God had a favorite animal? Why do you think God made the moon? So you're just kind of seeing what your kids, what answers they can come up with and asking them these questions about God. Okay, Pinterest is also a really great place to find table topics, conversation starters. You can find anything you want online, but just be cautious if you bring your phone to the table to look at those things. Don't be distracted by email or text messages or social media or anything like that. So conversation starters, table topics, those are a great place to start. I 
I love those. Now this is one of my new favorite things. I love the idea of having a feelings chart on your table. Lisa, you love drive I time? I love, yes. You could have this in the car for after school. I oh, think this would also great. be a really good idea. So I'm gonna read you a quote from a book that I've been reading, some people that I really love what they're doing about why this feeling chart is so important. This book is called Are My Kids on Track? And it's by Sissy Goff, David Thomas, and Melissa Trevathan. They are um, child and family counselors out of Nashville, Tennessee. And in this book, they say that in order for your kids to make emotional literacy a priority, for you to prioritize that in your family, this is what needs to happen. It all starts with the milestone of vocabulary, the ability to read and articulate our own emotions, as well as the emotions of others. Emotional literacy is a prerequisite to regulation, practice empathy, resourcefulness, and healthy interpersonal relationships, which all of those things we want our kids to be able to do. So lean into that statement. If this is true, then as parents, educators, and people who care about children, we should feel a strong sense of urgency to weave emotional literacy into the daily rhythms of our families and classrooms. So. If you print this and you keep it around your table, or if you choose to use it at drive time, you can say, can you point to one way you felt today? Mm, and so if you have that. younger kids, the emojis are really good. I mean, you this is a pretty simplified feelings chart because if you get the emotion wheel, I mean, it's oh, like man. Too dozens many emotions, of things. Thomas. But for kids, this is really great. But everybody needs to participate. Dad needs to participate. Mom needs to participate. Because how powerful mm. for your kids to hear, oh, my dad felt nervous today. He had a presentation at work. So that means it's okay for me to sometimes feel nervous. I love that. Or my dad felt sad today. He got bad news from a friend. It's okay for me to feel sad. So we are building that emotional vocabulary. We're helping our kids be able to identify that and also know it's okay to feel all kinds of ways. And then we process that, walk through it together as a family. So a feelings chart is a great tool. Love that. All right, so here at our church, we use Orange Curriculum, and with Orange Curriculum comes God Times, which are Bible studies for your kids every day of the week. Now, if you don't go to church with us here, but you happen to get a glimpse of this video, these God Times and these resources are all on our church's website. So, but these God Times, if the goal is to establish values with your kids, then God Times that our curriculum provides is a great resource because every month the curriculum talks about a different value or what they call a life app. Now all these values are communicated through the lens of the gospel. So our goal is not to just raise moral kids, it's not for our kids to just make good choices, but it's to be the kind of person that God created them to be. But this just brings up some really good discussion. So for example, when we're filming this, we're in the month of August and our um, life app this month is creativity. And so in learning this, they're learning that God created them, that they're fearfully and wonderfully made, that they all have creative aspects of God in their life that are meant to bless the world. And so those are all things I want my kids to know. But these God times, if you keep these on your table, um, there's like a simple verse for you to read, a little short devotion for you to read, and maybe an activity. So it's super simple. If you wanna bring a real spiritual discussion to your dinner table once or twice a week, this would be a really great resource for you. All right, this one is super fun, especially older elementary, middle school, high school kids. It's a company that I discovered this year called Dwell Differently, and I'm gonna link to their website on our website so that you can check them out. And I feel like I should have done like, sponsorships or something, right? <laughs> like Dwell Differently should have sponsored this video. But they didn't, I'm just telling you things that my family loves. So again, I'll keep this in my little meal caddy and when you get your envelope, I'm gonna do an unboxing here. Hey. I've been watching YouTube with my kids. Okay, so what you get, you get a little card that explains the verse and you get family That's tattoos. Cool. And then it also comes with key rings, which are on my keychain right now. So. Um, and what is cool about these tattoos is it's the first letter of every word of the verse that's designed oh. into the temporary tattoos. So my kids wear these, I'll wear them, uh, my husband wears them, and we're just memorizing this verse and talking about it all month long. Cool. You get one, uh, um, you get one verse a month, one set of tattoos a month. And so it's just something really fun, a way to prioritize scripture awesome. in your home yeah. and to keep it on their minds even as they go to school. So we love dwell differently. Okay, and then my last idea for you is just to have a family prayer time. So here's a couple of ideas for that. If you have younger kids, we have at one point had like a prayer jar that looks kind of like this, and we would write people's names on a stick. 
mom, dad, yeah. teachers, friends, grandparents, whatever. And everybody at our table would draw one stick and we would all pray for that person that day. So you can pray for people, you can use something like that. Um, one idea that one of my friends gave me was to save your Christmas cards. And so we started saving our Christmas cards and our graduation announcements that we get from seniors. And so we might say, hey, let's pray for somebody from our sack today. And so we'll draw one out of the sack, we'll pray for that family or that now college freshman. And we might send them a text message and just say, hey, we prayed for you today. And it's just a way for us to encourage others to think about others and to pray for them. <sighs> okay, so that makes me feel so much better just to know that I have tools in my belt that I really only need to start with one meal or snack or breakfast or lunch. And I love the fact that I have lots of different possibilities and that it's not necessarily like a curriculum that I'm right. responsible to teach. It's a conversation, just a very intentional conversation. Mm -hmm. So all those are super helpful. And of course, Joy is putting them all together on the website for us. So if you go to theheightsfellowship.org forward slash kids, just click on the parents tab and it will all be there for you. Thank you so much, Joy. Mm -hmm.